If you're a real jar head, you might not have heard of the Great Plain of Jars in the middle of Laos. At least I think it's the middle of Laos. I... It's a nation with confusing dimensions. The Plain of Jars is a megalithic series of massive stone jugs littered across the Yangkoang Plateau. Thought to be used in burial rituals as early as 1240 to 660 BC, some very soundly minded people believed that they were indeed drinking vessels for a mysterious and powerful race of massive humanoids which, given the average size of a Laotian male, was probably someone at least 5 foot 9. With a local legend declaring that a tribe of giants used them as a wine chalice to celebrate a great victory. When I asked someone for information about the Plain of Jars, he said, quote, The Plain of Jars has long hidden between the facade of strategic importance. You should expose the fact that those superpowers in the 20th century fought for control of the region to learn more about the ancient giants and their imminent return to our mortal realm. So, I guess, take that as you will. I'm not going to talk about the giants' imminent return to the mortal realm. I think it's really not a big deal. The Netherlands' colonisation of Indonesia means that we have tall people on hand in the region in case of a cascade incident in Indochina. And most casualties would be insurable as Malaysia can define it as an emergency instead of a war and allow recompensation by insurance agencies. Frankly, it's an economic positive for most people involved. It is of strategic importance that we call this conflict an emergency or SGIO will not pay me for all the rubber lost that the giants repurposed into basketballs to dunk on Filipino Cedo division. Don't underestimate the morale loss that you would get if you dunk on Filipinos. They love basketball. Speaking of strategic importance, the battle of the Plain of Jars is an interesting ordeal. It is mentioned 23 times in Wilfred G. Burchett's paper, The Furtive War. Singapore, the leader of the Path at Lao, a resistance against a Laotian puppet government run by Nosaven, and Kong Lee, a bloke who briefly cooked Nosaven's government with his fellow paratroopers, used this region to bamboozle Nosaven's army, and over the attritious course won back control of Laos, with an uneasy alliance between Singapore's Path at Lao and Kong Lee's neutralists. By the way, here is a picture of Nosaven. <laughs> A man with the same haircut as Scott Morrison and a dopey look that makes you wonder if he's one of those sci-fi brain implants that exchange happiness with consciousness. Why yes, Mr. President, the joy way you gave me makes me quite happy. Uh, Lucifer, your nose is, uh, bleeding. It's alright. Hi, Bloom High from the future here. You can tell because I have a conveniently plot-driven new moustache or lack thereof. My friend wanted me to emphasize just how incredible it is that the Plain of Jars still manages to exist to this day. It has been there for 3,000 years and has survived everything, including, but not limited to, the fall of the Khmer Empire, the rise of Lang Zhang, the White Elephant War, the fall of Lang Zhang, Burmese invasion, the Anavong Rebellion, Thai occupation, the Ho Wars, the Pache Rebellion, World War II, the First Indochina War, and most impressively, the Second Indochina War, in which the Plain of Jars was subject not only to some of the fiercest and prolonged conflict in Lao Civil War, but the most concentrated and extensive bombing in all of human history. Think of how many bombings have existed in the world. It's quite amazing to think about given that it wasn't an architectural marble like the pyramid or ancient Khmer temples. Nor was it issued in some irrelevant forgotten place, Xiang Kyoang Plateau, like I mentioned earlier, which is a plain surrounded by highlands and is thus quite desired. It's a bunch of just real big stone jars that have for some reason survived time immemorial. Laos today remains an underdeveloped country due to a history that is undeniably smited by God. Having to deal with wars, bombings and mines leading to the death of thousands. On top of that, massive brain drain and Kuomintang fueled opiate crisis in the post-war has made this economically and physically isolated nation fare even worse than its Vietnamese neighbour. Nevertheless, it has slowly managed to overcome these problems. 
and the Plain of Jars remains a megalithic wonder worth visiting if you ever find yourself in that part of the world. I mean, is visiting really that big of an ask? Ciao.